Strong oxidizing agents actually have the capability of cleaving the carbon-carbon double bond entirely and installing carbonyl groups where the alkene carbons were. This is a really cool reaction, especially after you learn about reactivity of the carbonyl group. This is going to open a lot of doors to some very interesting structural rearrangements and, and transformations starting from alkenes. The most common oxidant that's used to do this is ozone, and then the reaction is called ozonolysis. The alkene is first treated with ozone, and then we treat with a reducing agent. And this can vary a little bit. You'll see zinc and water used, um, or you'll see dimethyl sulfo sulfide, uh, dimethyl sulfide, ME2S, or DMS used for this. And the net result here is complete cleavage of the carbon-carbon double bond. Notice these carbons highlighted in red, the alkene carbons completely separated, and on each alkene carbon, we install a carbonyl oxygen, CO double bond. The mechanism here is quite interesting. O3 adds to the alkene in a pericyclic step, highly analogous to what we just saw with syndihydroxylation, actually. And we get this molozonide intermediate. This can break apart through electron flow like this to produce a ketone, or aldehyde as the case may be, and this interesting structure. And these can actually recombine in a different way than they broke apart to produce this isomeric ozonide. So essentially the overall result from here to here is a rearrangement of the initially formed mole ozonide to an ozonide. And this is where the reducing agent comes into play. In fact, these have been isolated. If we don't add the reducing agent, the uh, product is going to get stuck at this. So the reducing agent does different things depending on its identity. But in the case of something like dimethyl sulfide, we're going to get nucleophilic attack by that sulfur at one of the oxygens in the OO bond. And this causes a cascade of electron flow that establishes the CO double bonds and, and breaks the ozonide ring apart. So something like this. And ultimately, we're going to land electrons back on this oxygen, which gets plucked out of the ozonide. And we end up with, in this case, two copies of the same carbonyl compound. We end up with two acetones, since the two carbons in the starting alkene are identical. And the byproduct here is dimethyl sulfoxide, an oxidized form of DMS. Let's practice with ozonolysis by predicting the products of each of these reactions. So in each case, we've got O3, and then the reducing agent, dimethyl sulfide, reacting with an alkene. Whenever I see O3, my first thought is find the alkene and cut it in half. And here, we've got a case with two different alkene carbons. So we should expect two different carbonyl compounds as products of this reaction. And it's going to be important to draw them both. So mentally, what we're going to do here is cut right down the middle, break both of those bonds, and add an oxygen doubly bonded to each carbon to generate the two products. So if I add an oxygen to the left half, I end up with acetone, 2-propanone. If I add an oxygen to the right half, keep in mind there's an implied hydrogen here. So I'm going to end up with an aldehyde, actually with a hydrogen linked to this carbonyl group, and the rest of the molecule completely untouched. When the double bond appears in a ring, we end up with a dicarbonyl product. And that's what's happening in this case. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just redraw the part of the molecule that does not uh, react under these conditions, the sort of alkyl part. These two carbons highlighted in red are chemically equivalent. And so there, we're going to do the same thing we did above. We're going to add a carbonyl oxygen to both of those carbons and cleave right down the middle here. And we're going to end up with two aldehydes. So we'll have an aldehyde kind of in the front right here and an aldehyde in the back right here. And notice, all we did was completely broke the carbon-carbon double bond. This is about the only reaction in organic chemistry that can do this, completely cleave a carbon-carbon double bond. And we added a carbonyl oxygen at each of those alkene carbons. As I mentioned earlier, once you learn to do things with carbonyl compounds, this reaction is going to be extremely powerful. Because you'll be able to, for example, convert an alkene into a dicarbonyl compound like this and do interesting things like aldol addition and all kinds of other things uh, to sort of diversify or complexify these products of ozonolysis reactions.